It's very important to understand that primarily societies in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, were in fact oral societies. In other words, most of the information that they transmitted from one to the other was based upon stories, information that they remembered generation to generation, passed on from child to son. This is how information was spread and memorized and stories were attained in the hearts and minds of people. And in that respect, the Qur'an is not really any different. However, the degree of the preservation of the Qur'an in its oral form is really something remarkable. And that is what we want to talk about today. Actually, the Qur'an itself mentions in the 17th surah, in the 106th ayah, the meaning of which is, and it is a Qur'an we have divided into parts that you may recite it to men at intervals and we have revealed it in stages. And the reason is because this facilitated the memorization and the retention of the Qur'an in the memories of people. God would reveal some verses of the Qur'an at a particular time concerning a particular incident and people would memorize those verses. The Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of God, Muhammad, he would memorize those verses. Those companions who could write, those scribes, he would order them to write down the verses of the Qur'an and they would write it down. But the Prophet himself, it's important to understand, was illiterate. He couldn't read and write. In fact, there were very, very few people in Arabia at that time who were actually capable of reading and writing, very few of them. But some of them who could would write down the verses of the Qur'an on various bits of parchment and even palm leaves or, you know, the cured animal skins or bits of papyrus, for example, which was all that was available at the time. But most people, they would memorize the verses of the Qur'an. Not only would they memorize them, but then they would try to inculcate and practice what those verses were teaching in their life. So this had a type of dual effect, memorizing it in terms of the actual words and then implementing it in terms of their actual actions. So this is one of the great wisdoms of the Qur'an being revealed in stages. It also meant that the implementation of Islam, the practice of the religion of Islam, was allowed to be done gradually and this is really in concordance and in agreements with the human nature. It's very difficult for the human beings to suddenly change everything all in one go. And that is one of the amazing aspects of the revelation of the Qur'an, how it was revealed in stages, bit by bit, slowly, so that people were able to practice it in their lives. Now, one of the things the Qur'an tells us that is actually a recitation that has been made easy to memorize. The Qur'an actually, and in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He has made the Qur'an easy to memorize. And this is something that is a really astounding fact, how the Qur'an has been memorized over the ages. And in order to aid that memorization amongst the generality of the Muslims, of course, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the various Imams or the people who were leading the prayers for the Muslims in different parts of Medina, for example, at the time, they would recite the Quran out loud in the dawn prayer and the sunset prayer and the night prayer. So they are constantly hearing the recitation of the Qur'an in the prayers. And this is especially more the case in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, would read through the whole of the Qur'an. 
and this was a habit that the Muslims had and they retain it until today of reciting the whole of the Quran in the month of Ramadan. This is how stage by stage, piece by piece, the Quran came to be memorized in the minds and the hearts of people. So let's look a little bit further into some of the aspects of this memorization. By the time the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, had died, we find that there are many, many different people who had become hufaz or they had become memorizers of the entire Quran. And these people were very, very respected, of course, in the Muslim community because they had managed to memorize the entire Quran. And this memorization of the Quran was passed on generation after generation through all the generations of the Muslims until today. In fact, what we have is what is called a mutawatir transmission of the Quran. This concept of mutawatir, what does it mean? Well, essentially it is an idea or it means that so many different people have narrated a particular story or a particular thing from so many different directions. It is impossible, it's inconceivable that these people could have gathered together to invent a falsehood. In other words, imagine you have a thousand people. These thousand people, each of them are teaching another thousand people. And each of those thousand people teach another hundred people. Can you imagine how many hundreds of thousands of people that constitutes? And is it possible that these people could have all gathered together and conspired together to invent something? No, it's not something that is possible. And this is the case with the Quran, the entire Quran. Every verse of the Quran has come to us throughout the ages, a continuous mutawatir transmission of these verses of the Quran. Also, when someone wants to become a expert, a hafiz of the Quran, that they will also have to sit with a teacher and they will have to learn the Quran in a special way. These teachers who have specialized in the tajweed and the recitation and the memorization of the Quran have acquired students, students have studied with them for maybe three to six years. And after maybe, it could be anything from three to six years when a student has really reached proficiency in this particular field, then that scholar will give them what is called tazkiyah. It means they will give them a type of written approval to recite and to transmit the recitation of the Quran. And he only does this after very, very thoroughly checking that this person can recite the Quran precisely and concisely with the correct accent and with the correct elongation of certain sounds. It's a science, really. And so this also further ensures that in no way, shape or form is the Quran allowed to be distorted and corrupted. It is the case of the Quran that literally countless millions of human beings throughout the ages have memorized the entire Quran. In fact, in the mosque where I work, one of the Imams there had memorized the entire Quran by the time he was seven years old. So this preservation of the Quran through the oral transmission and the memorization of the Quran in the minds of people is not something only that Muslims claim. It is something that even non-Muslim scholars have recognized and have commented about. So I'm just going to read now a few comments from some Orientalists. They are the scholars who expertise is in this field. So for example, A.T. Welch, he writes, For Muslims, the Quran is much more than scripture or sacred literature in the usual Western sense. Its primary significance for the vast majority through the centuries has been in its oral form. The form in which it first appeared, 
as the recitation that was chanted by Muhammad to his followers over a period of about 20 years. The revelations were memorized by some of Muhammad's followers during his lifetime. And the oral tradition that was thus established had a continuous history ever since, in some ways independent of and superior to the written Quran. Through the centuries, the oral tradition of the entire Quran has been maintained by the professional reciters, Qurra. Until recently, the significance of the recited Quran has seldom been fully appreciated in the West. Also a leading Orientalist, whose name is Kenneth Cragg, he said, the Quran is perhaps the only book religious or secular that has been memorized completely by millions of people. And he goes on to say, this phenomenon of the Quranic recital means the text has traversed the centuries in an unbroken line of living sequence of devotion. It cannot therefore be handled as an antiquarian thing, nor a historical document of the distant past. The fact of Hiv, meaning Quranic memorization, has made the Quran a present possession through all the lapse of Muslim time and given it a human currency in every generation, never allowing its relegation to bear authority and reference alone. This is a very deep and important statement because it really, really, in, it further reinforces that the Quran is not merely a reference work. It's not merely a text. It is something that is living. It is something that is vibrant and the memorization and the constant renewal of this memorization is what makes the Quran so vibrant and so real in the hearts and the minds and the lives of everyday Muslims. This is what the Reverend Bosworth Smith quoted in his book, Muhammad and Muhammadanism. And I think it's just worth repeating that again. It's a book, he says, unique in its origin and its preservation. The authority of this preservation of the Quran no one has been able to cast a serious doubt. Now there have been people throughout the ages, there have been people who have attempted in various shapes and various forms, and some of these people have come forward recently trying to cast aspersions and some doubts on the authenticity of the Quran. But in fact, in reality, no one has been able to make a serious challenge to the oral transmission of the Quran. And this is the point that we really have to remember. The Quran has been written down. It has been recorded in written form. And we do have ancient manuscripts dating back very closely to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. But what adds to this indisputable authenticity of the Quran is this truly remarkable system of the memorization of the Quran. You are witnessing when you hear this a type of living miracle. You are witnessing how God is actively preserving his word in the hearts and the minds of the Muslims. And certainly Allah speaks the truth when he says, verily, we have revealed the reminder and upon us is the preservation of it. This is a living miracle. Is there a book in the world like this? Is there anything that can be compared to the Quran in just this aspect alone? This is only the beginning of the wonders of the Quran. This is your brother, Abdurrahim Green, saying to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.